I'm delighted to be here and share with you the story of the campus that I'm part of, Indiana University East. I've been with Indiana University for about 27 years. Indiana University has eight campuses. Two of these campuses are research-based uh, universities with about half a billion dollars in research with graduate, professional, and doctorate program. And then there are six other universities within Indiana or university that are more like your Cal State. They have bachelor's and selected master's program and focusing mainly on education, not uh, while they do scholarly work, but not at the level of other universities. Uh, so today, I'd like to talk to you about my experience in redesigning of this campus. I joined this campus, Indiana University East, about uh, four and a half years ago. So the story that I'm gonna tell you is, is how we have redesigned it and how we have created a new model of higher education. Uh, but before I go there, I wanna give you a bit of an information or background information of why I decided to leave a uh, campus of Indiana University that I was with for a number of years, quite successful and uh, to go to a campus where, where they had major financial issues, pressures, and there were questions about the existence of that campus. So let's hold on to that idea, and let me go back to the, my, my, my background information. I was born in Iran and came to this country 37 years ago, went to New York City. I cannot forget the first night I was there because a couple of months before that, I saw Midnight Cowboy. Uh, some of you remember that movie. Uh, most probably have not seen it. It's a good movie uh, for if you want to experience uh, something that in New York City. But I did not have that experience. I went to New York City and um, ended up in upstate New York, where I did my studies there. And, um, and I always hated snow and cold, uh, but there were no internet. 37 years ago. I had no clue that Buffalo gets that cold and Syracuse that cold. Uh, a few months later, our colleague here from New Orleans mentioned uh, the name of New Orleans. I remember I was driving in the southern part of the uh, US, and I got into the city of New Orleans and wanted to stay someplace and have dinner. I pulled and parked, and, uh, and I saw this street. And it was just people were having so much fun. Later on, I learned that Bourbon Street is, is quite different. I, at those times, I thought, what a country. People are having so much fun. <laughs> a few years ago, when uh, I was at uh, one of the major campuses of Indiana University, I had a responsibility uh, for uh, managing international programs in engineering overseas. I did a lot of travel. And I noticed that year after year after year, the emphasis on education in other countries seems to go higher and higher and higher. And of course, I don't need to tell the group here that some statistics show that maybe we are falling behind in, in that category. So four, four and a half years ago, I was really interested in making a difference in designing a new campus, which is slightly different. One that does not say, you all come to my campus. I have these beautiful buildings. You give me your money. And if it's not there, I complain that there is not money. So I wanted to, to do make a difference in there. So I decided to leave uh, a campus of Indiana University, go to IU East, which had huge enrollment problems, financial issues, deficit, and, uh, and then work with the faculty staff there to redesign uh, that campus. We took about 20, 30 different initiatives in this four and a half years there. And I'm going to talk about some of these items, but I'm going to group them into four categories. We did uh, some work in, uh, that we call in creation of model of a uh, uh, new model of higher education. So some initiatives to create a different way that we deliver higher education. Uh, another set of initiatives dealt with uh, efficiencies. How can we bring efficiencies like, uh, like we do perhaps in for-profit organizations where people look at the bottom line. Well, is there a way that we could look at higher education and come up with efficiencies without cutting quality of the education that we deliver? Uh, we also looked at um, areas where we could provide some incentives to students to make them uh, really want to be uh, excited about where they are and go to school. It, it, when I went to college in the 70s, 
not everyone decided that they want to go to college. I mean, in manufacturing in Midwest, uh, people were quite successful. And college was not on top of everyone's uh, list of priorities. But now, as we know, a lot of people are coming not uh, uh, maybe as determined as they were. So, so providing an incentive to students, initiatives that provide incentives to students uh, was, was the category that we wanted also uh, to, to do some work in. So let me take a look at these, uh, these areas and, and talk about what we did in, in, in some of these areas. For example, in the creation of new model of higher education, we decided that we, maybe we can outsource education, much like some businesses outsource, but with the quality. But instead of going to China or India, we decided that we need to partner with community colleges that we have and perhaps eliminate all of our remedial courses that we offer, associate degree programs that we offer, and work with community colleges where we could then team up with them and have students go through that program. So we became the first university in the state of Indiana that stopped offering remedial classes, associate degrees, and worked very well with the community colleges in partnership with a number of community colleges in our region, not only in Indiana, but also in Ohio, Sinclair College. We decided that uh, perhaps we can provide, instead of inviting everyone to come to our campus, we go out. So we went to hospitals, we went to a number of community colleges, and we, we partner with them and offer uh, a number of degree programs at these sites where we offer the last two years, they offer the first two years. We have nursing program, RN to BSN, a number of hospitals where, where they host, they provide spaces. We go to their workplace, they're very busy and we deliver programs there. And we have a, uh, a, a number of students, uh, hundreds of students that are going through this program. We are reaching older adults uh, as well in this, in this way. Uh, online programs. We thought that maybe a credible online program that partners with other universities where we offer the last two years online, especially reaching uh, older adults that have uh, difficult, they can't just stop everything, come to a campus. So we, we today, after four years, we have about a dozen undergraduate degree programs online the last two years uh, only, partnering with others. We are leading Indiana University, all campuses in delivery of online programs. Uh, that is, again, rooted in the quality of the programs that we have. We uh, also decided that maybe we need to create programs that uh, help students do the right thing. And I'm not talking about advising. I'm talking about coaching them. I'm, I'm making sure that they, they see an advisor, making sure that they declare advisor, making sure that if they have financial aid, they do go to the right place. So we created a department we call student coaches. They become friends of students and work with students and, and guide them through. Uh, the, this is something new. And, and that had turned out to be very successful among students, that, that they feel that they could talk to people on campus moving forward. We also changed the budgeting system of the university. Typically, in universities, uh, someone has a pot of money, and deans come and, and uh, make a case. I want this money for this. I need technician. Universities are more expenditure-oriented. They want more technicians, more faculty, more departments. Now, you ask people, what is, what is your enrollment? What's your retention rate? What's the success of students? Well, they are not prepared to answer those questions. So what we decided to do is to fund schools uh, based on their performance. And in fact, what we do at the beginning of the year, we give all the tuition that comes to us, to the student, to schools that teach those courses. We give state appropriation based on the retention and graduation rate of the, of the uh, schools. So at the, when I distribute the money, I have no money. Our admission office has no money because we gave it away to schools. Then we turn around and we uh, tax them for our services, admissions, registrar services. This way we have turned the table around. If I want to add another vice chancellor, for example, I'm the one going and begging deans, can we all pull together some money? Because it's their money. This way they become more in control of their money and they use it in the right way. I remember uh, as soon as we implemented this budget plan, I had a, an email from a dean saying that, could I have $50,000? Our class always uh, takes the students to Spain. They do this. And a page and a half of how wonderful this program is and, uh, and, and that I should give the money. 
So I wrote back, I said, it seems like you forgot. I divided the money to you. I have no money, you have the money, and uh, you could decide whatever you want to do. You want to do that? Fine. Then, then he wrote back, maybe on second thought, I could use this money for a different purpose. So the idea of dividing the money, giving it empowering faculty and, and, and uh, schools, is that they make a decision, what they want to do. If they want to hire more faculty members, put it more for, towards uh, area of retention and, uh, and graduation rate. So we had series of uh, initiatives related to budget. We have series of initiatives uh, in uh, support of new model of higher education, as I mentioned. We also provided incentives to students. Uh, all of our scholarships have um, a variable uh, amount based on the performance of students. And, uh, and if they commit to, we have an agreement, 30 credit hours with some people, less with some others. If they agree to that, we keep on giving discounts as they go higher. This way, they are more motivated to want to stay with the program and, and continue because we are making it easier for people who are serious and want to be successful to, to move forward. So, so that's an incentive that we provided. We also looked at our operation and decided that we, maybe we want to take a look at every office and see, well, it made sense 40 years ago. Does it make sense now? Uh, we downsized administration, uh, vice chancellors. We cut a number of them. Uh, I, I was a faculty. I crossed the dark side, thereby strongly believe that the core of a university is its faculty and that we all have to work in a way that we support their, their work. So we've cut down a number of offices, in the, the, mainly in administration, making sure that it goes towards the uh, academics. We also changed the, the org chart in the first month I was on the job. Uh, as far as the offices and reporting rights, again, focusing on academics, we even moved half of the uh, offices of the campus, starting with my own office, and then that makes it easier for people to move. Again, all because of the priorities that we set for ourselves, and we wanted to make sure that if, if an area had uh, a, our priority, then they had to be visible, they had to have resources that they wanted to move. Of course, moving on campus is very difficult. Uh, anyone that moves is upset because they lo lost the window or they had to pack again, and of course those that did not move are upset that uh, they didn't move to a place where they had, they had windows. Go having gone through remodeling and, and redesigning this campus in the last four years, we have been able to achieve significant results in terms of retention and, and as well as uh, quality of the programs. Four years ago, we had the lowest retention rates among all uh, Indiana University campuses. Today, we have the highest retention rate among all Indiana regional campuses. Our enrollment has gone up by 69% in the, in the four years, and our uh, budget expenditure per student has also gone down dramatically by 21% in this period. So we are reaching more students more uh, in, a, in a new way, quite efficient and partnership with other universities. Uh, about six months ago, uh, Lumina Foundation wanted to do a study, a case study of Indiana University East and, and see what are the kinds of things that we have done and what are the results for it. They, uh, they commissioned a, uh, a company out of uh, Florida, MGT, and they put a report that came out about a month ago. If you really want to know some of these specifics of the changes we have made and the results and how we have uh, assessed them and how they think uh, we've been uh, successful, uh, just uh, Google uh, Indiana University East MGT report. I'm sure you could get a hold of that. It's a very nice report that itemizes all the changes we have made and the quality of the programs that we have brought in. So this has been the story of uh, uh, Indiana universities and the good work of our faculty and, and staff and how we have created a model that we can, without adding more buildings, without having uh, spending money on administration, we've been able to increase our reach, re raise the quality of students, increase retention uh, rates of students, which is going to help with the graduation rates a few years from uh, down, the, down the line. And I'm delighted that I had this opportunity to share this with you today. Thank you.